I'm belonging to this research center of post mining. Uh, this again belongs to a technical university in Germany, in Bochum. Uh, we're dealing with everything that comes when uh, mines are closed. And um, I bring you a little bit uh, apart from these um, technical discussions that we had before. Um, I would like to um, show you about a project uh, that is funded by the Rack Stiftung and uh, we are dealing with uh, my, uh, post mining dewatering of so called polder areas. Um, that is um, the area of subsidence after you dig out of the coal, and um, we have um, a lot of uh, things to do with that. Um, we call it, um, let's say, eternity tasks. You have to do it for the rest of eternity, I guess. Um, what means that uh, post mining really is a nice job. No? I cannot lose it anymore. So I would like to tell you about uh, this project, Muse. We call it Muse. I show you how we try the data fusion and then I'm coming um, yeah, to some results and a conclusion. Um, I'm sorry that I need to um, do this way because I do not see it on the monitor and I do not know which slide is there. Um, do you know this map? Somebody saw this map? Not really, no. That is uh, the subsidence areas in the Ruhr area, only the Ruhr area. And if you see the, uh, the values here, uh, more than sometimes 20 meters of subsidence by digging out of the coal. There's a problem because of this number. I guess you also never heard about this number, 800 million of cubic meter. That is the water that we have to pump out every year out of these areas. Um, actually, I would like to to leave that because then we have Masuri in uh, Ruhr area. Everything was flooded then. Um, so nobody liked that actually because the people want to live there. Um, and that is um, a real huge amount of water which actually um, costs a lot of money. And uh, this is such an area. Um, looks pretty nice, no? but what you can see actually is uh, the sink edge of one of the subsidence areas. Um, behind there where you see the chimneys, Everything is fine, that is the, the situation before mining. But uh, here in this place, um, actually there should be a river, the Boye River, and this Boye River now um, is underground. So behind me, behind me there is a pumping station, and this pumping station um, is uh, for getting this, this area dry, so that people can live there, that we can do agriculture and forestry. Um, and funny things is that some brooks flowing just the wrong direction. They're just flowing to the, um, yeah, let's say not to the river, but uh, they're flowing to the, to the pumping stations at the moment. That is our problem in this area. And um, we have uh, this project funded by the Rack Stiftung, and it is about um, dealing with um, brooks in these areas, with rivers in these areas. We had um, a huge effort uh, in um, bringing the so-called Emscher River back to nature. Let's say, I don't know, actually three million or billions uh, or five billions of euros uh, to bring it back to nature. And now we have the situation that um, we have climate change. And due to this climate change, we have droughts, we have heavy rain situations, and uh, we do not have an idea how these areas are developing. And that is uh, what I would like to talk about. Um, we need to pump out these areas, and we're going um, to um, check what uh, in situ sensors, um, drones, UAS or UAVs, and satellites can do with that. And that is uh, what I try to bring you a little bit closer. Um, only one aspect in this huge project is uh, how this, this brooks and this area can develop uh, close to nature. And uh, the approach is um, actually the first one, what we thought is that we could, should see the drought conditions in these areas by using satellite imageries. So we're flying with a satellite over this area and we see where the problems are, but it is not that easy. Um, the problem is that uh, we um, need to understand the process in situ. We need to go into the field, dig in our sensors, and then see what the satellite can tell us. And that is um, the idea that we had. We started with a very easy project. Um, we thought that, well, let's see, no, it's not working, that uh, high soil temperatures caused by heat, um, long drought periods, um, should actually cause damages in the plants, which then, again, 
uh, is to be seen in uh, multispectral data, um, calculating, for example, uh, vegetation indices like NDVI or GNDVI and, and some, uh, several others. That is what we thought, and uh, we try to, to do that actually in a pretty easy way. So our approach is capture data very locally, but then you're coming up with a, a very fast, um, let's say, big data problem because um, the aerial level um, is totally different from the data that you can get by, by soil sensors. Um, and when you check the satellites, then again, that is a totally other level because the sensor is sitting here on this place and it's measuring every second, every minute. I don't know what you, what you like to, but then only for this place that is valu valuable. But the drone then has a first uh, possibility of extrapolating this data. It shows you the first, let's say, area approach um, with high resolution, let's say five centimeters um, on the ground. Um, and then you come up with the satellite. This satellite, let's say Sentinel-2, is coming and uh, circling every six days over this area, but it has uh, pixels like uh, 10 by 10 meters. So that is uh, what we need to get together, to bring together, and we do that actually um, it, in standard GIS, but also uh, we call it in n-dimensional uh, uh, cubes, um, where this is all addressed, what I just explained. That is actually our approach, and um, it uh, belongs to um, this, this very old graphic uh, from one of our uh, books uh, for on soil science. Um, you can see the type of soil, and uh, using the soil, you have sandy, silty, or uh, clay soils, and our soils are laying in between, and the plant is, pos uh, is able to get the water, let's say, here in between. If you're going here, the water is, there's no adhesion, water is going to the ground level, to the groundwater, a uh, plant cannot get it. plant can get it here, the, the roots, uh, but there is a point at uh, PF 4.2 where uh, the plants are not working anymore. The adhesion is so large that uh, the roots cannot get the water out of the soil. And that is the point where the drought sets in. And um, this point we should actually see in the multispectral data because um, the chlorophyll, which, uh, um, yeah, let's say, bring the energy uh, to the plant, um, is then not working anymore, and the reflection is totally different than before. That is actually the, the thing behind. So we put our sensors in the field, um, different types of sensors, but usually uh, these are uh, small soil sensors which um, we can, can easily read out, or they're sending it by, I don't know, different types of networks. Um, Looks like that, little weather stations with uh, soil sensors over here, um, sensors that we can read out with RFID, NFC technology. We're doing uh, grain size analysis, and the hardest thing is to dig the holes for this, uh, but um, the positive thing is you can see the soil types and how they develop in this, these areas. So that is uh, what we have on the ground, and now we want to go one step further, going into the air. and. Um, I, we use uh, the DJI Phantom multispectral uh, camera because, and I think that is, that is uh, quite necessary to know, um, the sensor of the DJI and the Sentinel-2 satellite, they are pretty close together. So we think that we understand what the drone is showing us, we can find in the satellite level again. And that is uh, really uh, of interest because we do not found, find too much sensors which are so close to Sentinel-2. So for us, it was a, a good decision, actually. So what we are doing with these drone pictures, uh, there is just an example. We're doing uh, autophoto mosaics, but we also calculate um, the um, vegetation indices, a bunch of that that is in, in between. It's in the GIS, only a button, and you get, I think, 10, 20, 40 uh, indices, very interesting. Uh, I just show you uh, the NDVI, the normalized difference vegetation index, and the other one, um, and uh, we, where am I? Okay, um, we have this uh, composites and then we're going um, in the field and doing a mapping. We try to do a mapping. Um, this mapping is done by an old uh, mapping method, the stratified 
unaligned systematic sampling method. Uh, you see it's all, uh, already from uh, 1989 where field work was uh, common uh, at these times. Today it's more the computer work. But uh, we use this field work um, to calculate a systematic grid. And within this grid, um, you got dots uh, calculated by the computer so you can avoid from systematic errors. Um, that uh, was uh, pushed into a, um, a mobile GIS. We used uh, the uh, Survey 123 for that. So from, from uh, ArcGIS in this, this environment uh, was pretty easy. And using the GNSS, um, you can find these points in the field and you can do your measurements then. That is, um, yeah, let's say work. Um, the measurement was done by such sensors. It's RFID, NFC technology. You put it in, and let's say within a minute, you get a soil moisture value, and you can read it out using an application like uh, this, this uh, Telit application. Um, you, you write it down into your GIS, and then you have it. But uh, then you only have the points, what means that we to ca compare it, to, to integrate it with the, um, with the images from the drones, you have to get um, an aerial picture, and that is what we have done uh, using standard creaching me methods. Um, we calculated a semi-variogram, looks a little bit like that, um, should be um, another uh, discussion, and then you come up with an interpolation, and this interpolation then uh, was compared with the drone images. That was the first level, and like you see, here is the here is the, um, the scale, whether these results are good or not. We come up, uh, for example, with the ND, ND, GNDVI with a correlation of uh, 0.66 by a quite high... Um, uh, what is the name? So I'm missing, I'm missing a vocabulary. Uh, doesn't matter. You know here this R square. What is R square in English? Um, confident level, confident level. So now I have it. So this confident level um, is quite high, but you can see it's not uh, for, for every of the indices and especially not for the temperature. So the soil temperature and uh, the drone pictures do not fit together very well, and that is what we thought about. But um, this is actually um, the result of this project. We know now know that um, the uh, NDVI that you can calculate by drones uh, fits totally good together to this um, field work and um, that gives us the confidence that in the next time we can see it in a satellite level as well. So this, this type of understanding is uh, how we do the integration. Um, but we also uh, found that uh, the protective mechanisms of the plants um, might be a problem, so you will not see it immediately. So if the plant is starting, uh, as if the drought is starting, the plant is not reacting immediately. It takes a while uh, because you have, uh, you, they can close their stomata, keep the water inside, and then it takes like, maybe two days, three days, a week, or something like that. And the funny thing is that we uh, do not have uh, any correlations or good correlations to the temperature. Um, that we think um, was a problem in our setup because uh, during the mapping in the field um, the sun was going around and so you have shadows there and so on. But the conclusion is in this work in project that it actually works and uh, now we are confident to uh, understand the satellite uh, level as well. Thank you very much.